Hello everybody, welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a great day. Before I even start, I said this at the end of the last video and I did not mean to say it at the very end of the last video. Uh, I have received <clears throat> a number of uh, very generous donations over the last couple of days and I have not, I constantly forgot to mention them during the video. Uh, so thank you very, 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 very much to everyone who donated, even if you did not donate still, thank you. Uh, but I was actually taken aback by some of the donations that I got. Uh, so thank you very much for supporting the channel. I appreciate it more than you could like actually begin to imagine. Like I don't think you actually get it. Thank you very much. Uh, without further ado, let's get into some of the weekend news to start things off. Uh, I think we went over this a couple of maybe one of actually I don't even remember if we actually went over this or not. I feel like we didn't. Uh, so the Gemini, ex or rather the Winklevoss twins are trying to expand their Gemini exchange to the United Kingdom. I think Coinbase is also doing something similar. Uh, what's happening now is and I, as we go further into the video, you'll kind of get it. There's something happening in the United States and it's really weird because it's something that I spoke about a couple of weeks ago, even like two months ago at this point, and it's actually starting to come true. Uh, so with their expansion, this is also obviously very good for them as their business gets to, you know, it's propelled forward, what have you. But it's also a way to be able to have access to other markets as well. Because uh, you, if you focus just on one country for too long, uh, your profits probably aren't going to be there as much as they are in other countries. Uh, so anyway, this is the uh, Gemini news, if you will, that they're uh, finally starting to expand. And I assume that they're doing the UK maybe because they feel more comfortable with the United Kingdom as far as like English speaking countries and regulations and stuff like that. Uh, but I can only assume that at some point, uh, probably in 2019, that they're probably going to try to expand to the European Union. That's at least how I feel about it. Next up, we actually have news about Dash, not something that you're going to hear every single day. <clears throat> A Venezuela based company has introduced the first SMS wallet service exclusively for Dash transactions, enabling payments to be sent and received in the country without a smartphone or internet connection. Last month, Ryan Taylor, who is a CEO of Dash Core Group, said that it was seeing tens of thousands of wallet downloads from the country every single month. Hyperinflation and economic instability within Venezuela is forcing many citizens to turn to currency alternatives for those who do not know without getting into it too deep. Uh, Venezuela is currently going through hyperinflation and typically uh, when you see hyperinflation in other countries and stuff like that, it tends to be around maybe 100%, 150%, maybe 300% of the current value of their currency. Uh, Venezuela is uh, currently having 1 million percent hyperinflation. Uh, if you watch documentaries or things like that, people are actually walking around with entire pillowcases full of money just to be able to get a couple of slices of bread. So things are uh, pretty dire there at the moment. <clears throat> As a peer-to-peer -peer digital currency for payments with over 1,000 percent year-to-year growth in both value and trading volumes since 2015, Dash is providing an inexpensive and fast alternative to Venezuela's Bolivar. Figures from New Zoo. A global market intelligence company found that as of September, Venezuela only has a near 41% smartphone penetration rate. This means that a significant number of people aren't able to access Dash even if they wanted to. In order to solve this, Dash Text was launched. The platform was created by Alejandro Echeverria and Lorenzo Rey, who is also the company's CTO. By sending the organization a text message, even from a non-smartphone, it creates a wallet for the phone user straight away. This is controlled by a phone number and does not require internet access to set up. This is probably genius. When you talk about use cases for a cryptocurrency, this is an actual use case. There is an issue in a country right now, many other countries around the world, and I can, I can only assume that there are at least two other countries who are not only ad adopting cryptocurrencies because of hyperinflation, but probably have also looked towards uh, adopting Dash as well. Uh, I'm not sure if how in how far in advance this was actually planned by the Dash team, but the fact that this is even was created and they saw that there was an issue and they aimed to solve it and they did it is completely genius. <clears throat> Keeping in mind, uh, one, that's not to say that other projects have not tried to do this at the exact same time. Uh, but for whatever reason, Dash made sure that they were uh, the, the number one. Because I know right now, there's a huge amount of, there are a lot, a lot of people who are trying to uh, not download. Uh, mine, Dash, and also Bitcoin within the country. Uh, for some reason, Dash is, you know, has picked up and therefore Dash text. The point is, uh, this is an actual, you know, uh, if people are having a problem, you figure out exactly how to solve it. And now they have 
probably at least over 100,000, if not half a million people within the country now know what Dash is. Uh, using Dash to uh, preserve any type of, not even wealth, any type of money that they may have had. I think this is completely genius. A very big thumbs up to the Dash team. We don't typically hear about Dash at all. Uh, they're usually on the sidelines. They're usually only talked about when it comes to like uh, other privacy coins and, 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 and stuff like that. So I honestly do applaud them for this. Uh, this obviously came out a couple of days ago. I obviously didn't get a chance to get to it. But I think this is uh, when it comes to people using your coins or you wanting them to use your platform or your coins, we need people who think outside of the box. And Venezuela is not the only country that's going through this right now. Uh, and I can only assume that Dash is also trying to target other countries as well for this program. And I definitely hope that it succeeds because I think it is great. Next up, research conducted by the lecturer in finance at University of Queensland Business School, PhD, Wang Chun Wei, concluded that there is no substantial evidence that the USDT was used as a tool to manipulate Bitcoin prices during 2017. The study was titled The Impact of Tether Grants on Bitcoin, was written in May 2018, and uses a VAR model in which the price of Bitcoin could be correlated with the availability of USDT in the market. In this way, Mr. Wang Chun Wei sought to determine if there was a verifi verifiable relationship between both variables, the price of Bitcoin, and the issuance of Tether. Contrary to what many expected, the study did not find a direct relationship between the two. However, it showed that the issuance of Tether was correlated with an increase in trading volume of both cryptocurrencies. Without having to read any further, uh, what is interesting here is that for months we had a number of organizations and companies who were coming forward and even, I think, not governments, but it was like government uh, agencies who were coming forward and saying that they believe that Tether was actually manipulating the price of Bitcoin because every we, we, we had graphs of it. This was months ago. Every single time that there was a, a new issuance of Tether, Bitcoin's price would spike up around 7%, 8%. Uh, but there was a huge moment in 2017 where so much Tether was created, I think like uh, over a billion or something like that. And the idea was, or what we had heard was, is that every time the Tether was printed, they were using that Tether to actually buy more Bitcoin. And this kind of caused the price of Bitcoin to go up because there was an artificial, not inflation, but like scarcity of Bitcoin that was actually out there. Because every single time that they printed Tether that we did not know was real or not, rather as if the company was just continuously printing Tether, buying up Bitcoin, printing more Tether, buying more Bitcoin. And this is what they said caused the, the rise up in price. But the last two months, we've had a lot of people who have been coming forward and they have been saying that not only is Tether real, that they actually have the money backing them. But uh, they had no effect on the price of Bitcoin. I wouldn't go so far as to say no effect. Uh, even if it was just, you know, a couple of percent higher, that's definitely, you know, uh, don't assume that someone is printing millions of dollars or billions of dollars worth of something and that they're not buying a Bitcoin with it. Uh, I know the idea of a stable coin. I get it. I've been in crypto for quite some time. Uh, but something is definitely going on with Tether, and I'll kind of get to it a little bit later on in the video if I remember to do so, because other people are slowly uh, fighting against Tether because uh, all, of, all of the controversy that's kind of been surrounding it, people are trying to get away from it. But as of now, it seems that uh, Bitcoin was not manipulated. All, all of the all of the stuff that we had last year was about uh, Bitcoin price manipulation. Everything the last couple of months has been pointing to that organizations or governments or agencies or even the SEC or the CFTC, either by not releasing rules, by giving too many rules, by saying that you're going to have rules, saying that you're going to have this, saying that you're going to ban it, saying that you're going to print this, saying that you're going to do this, has had some type of an effect on the price of Bitcoin. So we know at some point, uh, even if it was just a whale, Someone's manipulating the price of Bitcoin, but everyone is holding their hands up and saying, it wasn't this, it wasn't that, it wasn't me, I cannot do this, this cannot happen, you know, whatever. Uh, but that is the, uh, was Bitcoin's price manipulated news? The answer is yes, but everyone is constantly saying no, that it wasn't. So this is, I'll, exp I'll, I'll try and explain a little tiny bit. Uh, U.S. federal judge Raya Zobel has ruled that some cryptocurrencies meet the legal definition of commodities and are under the supervision of the Commodities Future Trading Commission, or the CFTC. This was said by Reuters on Thursday. The decision came several days after another judge said that some types of virtual currencies are securities 
and can be under the control of the SEC or the Securities and Exchange Commission in the United States. The Zobo ruling comes as part of the CFTC's action against Randall Crater, the person behind the alleged cryptocurrency fraudulent activity of my big coin. In January, the regulator charged Crater and the company with the misappropriation of $6 million from investors between 2014 and 2018. CFTC also explained that the project had lured investors by claiming that their virtual coins were like Bitcoin and that it was not volatile as gold backs, or rather it was backed by gold reserves. Uh, trying to get to the blah, 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 blah. The U.S. Federal Securities and Commodities Act uh, were written decades before the birth of cryptocurrencies. You don't say. A situation that causes confusion over whether virtual coins are under SEC or CFTC oversight of cryptocurrencies are not part of the existing legal categories. One of the main topics of discussion among U.S. regulators and congressmen is whether all cryptocurrencies should be put under one legal definition as there is a significant difference between virtual coins and their usage. So this made headlines simply because a U.S. judge said that some cryptocurrencies can be commodities and the issue is that over the last couple of weeks, months, we've had news from the SEC that all cryptocurrencies that had an ICO were uh, securities and t t still are securities. Uh... I there's something happening in the US and I'm going to get to it very very soon where the US is being left behind the fact that this is all happening is absolutely insane it's complete madness I don't know if you feel the exact same way but having read through, uh, even when I'm not doing videos, I told you guys before, I am constantly reading crypto news because I like to be informed of the cryptocurrency space, what's happening with my money, uh, what's going on, who's doing what, and how things are happening and how things are developing. Other countries are slowly uh, coming together because they get it. Uh, there seems to be a bit of a, not a power struggle, uh, but it's between if cryptos are commodities, if they are securities, or if they are utilities, i.e., does your coin have a purpose? Does when people buy your coin, are they expecting a profit to be made from the activities of the company that they're buying their tokens from? All these things are, uh, it's like a really odd three layered, if not more tug of war. And this made headlines once again, because a judge finally ruled that some cryptocurrencies are commodities. While we've heard for quite some time that the SEC has said something different, uh, there are people in the SEC who believe that even Bitcoin it's actually a security as well, which makes no sense because Bitcoin isn't issued by a company. And we we d like you don't expect profits from the activities of the Bitcoin core group. It's just like Bitcoin is Bitcoin. Uh, this is only going to cause more problems as we get further. We had news a couple of days ago as well uh, when all those people uh, from crypto industries and uh, companies and cryptocurrency exchanges went to Washington uh, pretty much telling the government to get it together and please give us rulings and stuff like that and, you know, laws pertaining to all of this. And I have a strong inkling that none of that is going to happen anytime in 2018. But that is going to lead to something else that is going to be very interesting as we move forward. Stellar is in the news and this one is, I'll get to it in a second. Back in mid-March this year, the team at Stellar announced that they had decided that the Lightning Protocol was the best long-term scaling solution for its network. The team noted that scalability was one of the most debated issues in the mini blockchain projects and that they were approaching it with an open mind on Stellar. Core to their goals was to improve the user experience in terms of speed, throughput, and privacy or security. I, whatever, I say privacy. <laughs> the team went on to elaborate how Lightning works. They said Lightning is a scaling solution for distributed November. Originally proposed for Bitcoin, Lightning is designed to allow users to make off chain payments through routers and hubs. You guys know how Lightning works, more or less. According to the Stellar Roadmap, published along with the decision to implement Lightning, the release date was scheduled for the 1st of December. Here's their actual timeline. Uh, so the point is, is that people have been looking through, uh, you know, the roadmap to see exactly what's going on. Nothing apparently has been changed. So people think that by the 1st of December, uh, the Lightning Network could be placed on top of the Stellar Network. What's interesting for me is, is that, how do I say this? I wonder how they are going to properly implement this. We know that Lightning is already active on Bitcoin and has been for quite some time, but we have news or estimates that the full implementation 
of the Lightning Network on top of Bitcoin won't be active until around two years from now. And I wonder if Stellar is also going to have the same exact thing, because if Stellar is able to implement the Lightning Network on their blockchain and somehow figure out a way to get the entire network to jump on board and then they're then able to process even over 100,000 transactions per second, that could be a complete game changer. There's a lot of hype around this. Uh, but we know that there are other coins as well who have also stated that they are also going to try and implement the Lightning Network on their systems. But the same exact thing follows. You have to get other people on the network to actually agree and also uh, use the Lightning Network as well. If they do do this, this is going to be something uh, a bit of a shocker, if you will, for Stellar and their Lumens token. But as of now, it seems that they are on track to do this. It's just a matter of if they are able to completely implement it, especially uh, years quicker than it's taking uh, the Bitcoin team to do. Bitcoin is, of course, in the news. Uh, bah, 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 bah. DR, a crypto analysis website. Uh, they, de they have a detailed study that found that only 1% of all wallets hold 55% of all Bitcoin in the world. However, that's not the only curious thing that the company has discovered. DR was actually in the news a couple of days ago as well. They also, they, uh, is, oh gosh, it's DR, not Chainalysis. There's like two other companies who are like actively searching through all these numbers and stuff like that to figure out exactly what's happening in the cryptocurrency space. Who's doing what? What's, you know, where's this money going? And a lot of people have been starting to focus on um, dormant wallets. That is, uh, wallets that aren't being used, have been sitting there for quite some time. Or even people are trying to starting to tr now track like whale wallets. You know, if you have you know thirty thousand Bitcoin, not who owns it, but like what what are the activities that this wallet is doing? This is why we had news before. Whenever somebody would, uh, who had that many Bitcoin was sending it across the network, uh, the prices of Bitcoin would actually fall because people were afraid of some type of a sell off. For the study, wallets owned by whales that contained over two hundred Bitcoins were considered investment wallets and represented over $1 million in worth. DR concluded that 42% of those wallets had no outgoing transactions during the peak in price that happened in December of 2017. One reasonable assumption some analysts might reach after learning about those statistics is that the owners must have lost their wallet keys, making it impossible to do anything with their Bitcoin. However, 27% of the investment wallets had more coins added since the last month of 2017, People arguably wouldn't have agreed to putting more Bitcoin into their wallet if they had lost their private keys, as that would just completely be a waste. A person's first impression upon reading some of the statistics above is that there must be some extremely wealthy people active in the cryptocurrency sphere. That's not necessarily untrue. However, the DR research showed that the top five wallets owned by cryptocurrency exchanges have 3.8% of the total Bitcoin supply. Together, those five wallets account for over $4 billion in value. One of the main arguments was, I told you guys before, uh, this can be found easily online if you type it in in Google. 96% of all Bitcoin is owned by just 4% of wallets. We never had confirmation that 55%, so more than 51%, is owned by less than 1% of wallets. And the, the common argument has been there are crypto exchanges. These crypto exchanges have, you know, so many Bitcoin and so many cryptocurrencies inside of them. You can't say that uh, normal individuals are owning so much Bitcoin, but we actually can, especially because the wallets for crypto exchanges have been tracked for at least two years by now. Uh, we can or rather companies and organizations have uh, exact knowledge of who owns uh, what wallet when it comes to a cryptocurrency exchange many of them have had to be transparent to say exactly how many that they're holding when they when we have this number you can easily see on the blockchain who has this many bitcoin in their wallet people start paying attention to it and it's not it's not even like there's like one or two people paying attention at one time we have like an enormous amount of people who have dedicated their lives and i'm not joking to figuring out uh the movement of Bitcoin within the system. Who's moving what? Who's moving what from what wallet? How is this happening? Where is this being sent? So this is why we've had news before that, uh, you know, when when people are sending like 15,000 Bitcoin to an exchange, how they know that that money was being sent to an exchange because they're paying attention to some of the largest wallets. Uh, before, it used to be like wallets that had like over a thousand Bitcoin, but I guess as the price of Bitcoin has risen, 200 Bitcoin amounts to somewhere over a million dollars. So now these are also uh, not being tracked. I don't want to scare anyone, but like... Uh, people are paying attention as that's now a significant amount of money. 
Uh, but this is the, 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 the evolving nature of Bitcoin is quite interesting. I told everyone before, uh, Bitcoin is going to be something, uh, at least how I feel about it, that's going to be something for the elite. A lot of people were under the assumption for quite some time that Bitcoin was like hyper decentralized and there was no one person who had an enormous amount more than one other person. Uh, th th there's also like um, a, 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 um, there's like a Bitcoin rich list where you can see uh, the actual numbers that show that 96% own more than, you know, although 4% 4 of wallets own blah, 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 blah. Uh, but you can see that I think like a growing number of people are just holding around like 0 0.1. 0 0.01 bitcoin to 0. Point, I think 50 or some weird number like that and like it's it's becoming increasingly more difficult for people to actually not even own one bitcoin uh but also like a half of a bitcoin as you know people are buying into altcoins and stuff like that but uh the uh this is by the time bitcoin hits one hundred thousand dollars, think of how difficult it's going to be for people to uh own one bitcoin or save up enough to be able to buy one bitcoin and even more so when bitcoin's price hits a million but uh, very good uh, research. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is, uh, yeah, I don't know. I find stuff like this very interesting, especially when we know that there are a lot of prominent people in the cryptocurrency space who own like 1% of all the Bitcoin floating around out there. But that's neither here nor there. Uh, okay, this is, this is exactly what I was uh, trying to hint at somewhere around here. Uh, this is exactly what i was saying before and and i'll tell you a bit about it uh when i get through it recently in an interview on unchained chang ping Zhao, the founder and ceo of binance said uh, spoke about his early days in the cryptocurrency industry and the current regulatory state of the market uh he talks about who he met he knows bobby lee when he discovered bitcoin uh philosophy blah 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 uh Zhao was candid in stating that binance was not really focused on u.s regulations he said we are focused on everything else other than the united states so in the united states there's coinbase and gemini and a bunch of other exchanges dealing with regulation over there end quote furthermore the founder stated that the rest of the world was a bigger market for them Zhao pointed out the fact that regulation differs from country to country in his opinion there were several that were not clear about how to regulate the crypto space yet and that most of the regulators were still trying to learn and adapt and were adjusting to create regulations i had a uh a discussion with someone hello if you're listening probably not uh i actually have been fortunate enough to know a couple of people who actually worked for cryptocurrency exchanges and major cryptocurrency exchanges and we were discussing regulation and how regulation applies to them and what they were doing and Across the board, what I thought was the funniest part was that they had all announced or rather had told me uh, that the U.S. was no longer under their radar. Like it was something that they just didn't care about. Uh, they had had either too many issues with the U.S. They had difficulties entering the U.S. And they said, to be realistic, there's so much more of a focus on cryptocurrencies right now in Asia, in Europe, and even in South America and in Africa that they are just trying to... Uh, enter these other markets and the and the united states is no longer a thing for them you may have noticed over the last couple of weeks the news that we've constantly been having about the uh the space within the united states has become a lot more unfriendly not that i expect things to go to uh uh you know to dirt to fall down in the united states but i i found it very interesting during my conversations with people in the cryptocurrency industry that the U.S. is already done. Like, no one's paying attention to the U.S. anymore. And they said even, you know, even when they do have proper regulation or regulatory blah, blah, blah from the United States and they know exactly what's going on and what they can do and what coins are, it won't be a main focus. They'll open up an exchange there simply because they know that there's money to be made. Uh, but as of now, there are many other countries who have taken the mantle as far as, like, number one in the cryptocurrency space. And I told you guys before that this was going to happen. Uh, and it's really interesting to note uh, that even the Binance of CEO has said this before, uh, because what's happening right now is, is that not only is the U.S. like strangling uh, any crypto exchange that's trying to open within them, but they're so uh, the regulations are so tight and you don't actually know what you can do and what you cannot do and what you can list and who can do what. It's a it's a complete nightmare trying to uh, get anywhere into that uh, country. There's also news that we had a couple of 
days ago, there are multiple crypto exchanges, except for like Coinbase and Gemini, uh, and also crypto startups and crypto enterprises and crypto this and so-and-so that have been receiving subpoenas for the past like months, like multiple subpoenas. Uh, the government is constantly, and you know, the CFTC and the SEC, they're trying to constantly uh, control everything in the cryptocurrency space. And it's like when you can just get on a plane, travel for eight hours to a, you know, 35 other countries that aren't doing this to you, why would you stay inside of the U.S.? Uh, so, you know, the U.S. has a couple of months left. I, I told you guys, by the end of this year, if they haven't gotten it together, I think the U.S. will uh, still play a part in crypto, but I think they're going to be a fraction of a fraction of what they could have been. Quite interesting how things end up working out. Next up, this one's actually kind of cool. Um, in an unexpected move, the privacy-oriented Samurai Wallet development team has decided to take the first step towards a world in which cryptos replaced traditional fiat money and removed balances, expressions, and fiat. In an announcement published on its official blog, the Samurai Wallet team not only focused on the technical aspects of the app, but also shifted efforts to a more cultural level by welcoming the new international users and saying adieu to fiat currency. They said, we believe in its fundamental, it is fundamental that our existing and future users understand that when they transact within the Bitcoin network, when they participate in the Bitcoin economy, they are transacting with a na token native to the network, a BTC and nothing else. You may have noticed, I'm pretty sure a lot of you have some type of a like a desktop wallet where you can see the cryptocurrency prices and you usually also see the prices of uh, like in fiat currency as well. Uh, so if, okay, this is interesting because not only have they taken out the, the dollar or euro or yen or wherever you are balance from it, but is now completely denominated in Bitcoin. And that is something I think is going to take a lot of people a long time. If we do end up entering a world where Bitcoin does end up taking over in the next five, six, seven, eight years, or even crypto in general, the idea is that things will be completely denominated in that currency, in that cryptocurrency anyway. I wonder how the world is going to deal with something like this. I, I find it very fascinating. I'm pretty sure a lot of other wallets, first of all, a lot of other wallets already have like a feature similar to this where you can turn off the, the fiat balance if you just want to see how many Satoshi you have or how many so-and-so you have. Uh, but to completely remove it is quite interesting. And I wonder how this is going to uh, go moving forward. Because if you are, especially if you haven't been in crypto for quite a long time and you're used to seeing like a fiat number, and you look at your wallet and uh, like try and turn off your, your fiat balance and just look at it in the in the crypto balance it's going to drive you insane because you have no idea how much uh you have in fiat all you'll see is that you just have this number on your screen but uh if crypto ends up taking over this is how everything will end up being so next up is something from a company called cycling this is not an ad this is not me advertising i do not know the people who made cycling i thought it was kind of interesting cycling a bike bike chain <laughs> a blockchain startup based in singapore has launched electric vehicles that can mine crypto coins as users travel the blockchain enabled electric vehicles are meant to incentivize users to reduce carbon emissions and now they have a way to reward them as they do road vehicles such as cars and motorcycles continue to be the main contributors of carbon dioxide emissions in the transport sector they overshadow planes, trains, and boats combined. Due to this, there is an urge in many countries around the world to put more electric vehicles on the road. That's where Cycling comes in. By combining cryptocurrency software and blockchain tech coupled with electric powered vehicles, they aim to solve this problem for good. The starter will allow its users to rent these energy efficient vehicles and in turn reward them with cryptocurrencies. There's, there's something else a couple of months ago where there was a company who tried to make like a heater that mined crypto for you. We also had something a couple of months ago where there was another company in Asia who, who made a television and every time your television was turned on, it would mine cryptocurrencies. We also had someone else create a phone that was mining cryptocurrency. So this is, I wonder the speed or how quick uh, crypto will be adopted. You know, you only need like a taste. I'll put it that way. If Imagine if you were able to uh, rent a car and then be paid out in like Bitcoin. Or if you were able to, you know, heat up your home in the winter and know that you were making Bitcoin or watch TV and also still make some Satoshis on the side, what would that, I'm trying to understand like what that would actually do for the mentality of people. Because if you know that you have a fraction of something, you're going to kind of want more of it. Uh, very interesting what they're planning on doing. I'm pretty sure they're not the only ones who are also trying to do this as well, because I still firmly believe that we need to have a way to uh, further decentralize 
the uh, the mining that we have in a, in a couple of coins. And I uh, do like that other companies are trying to figure out a way to do this. I have a feeling in about five years, nearly everything in our homes will probably have a way to mine cryptocurrency, which wouldn't be too bad. Uh, that w Imagine a world where, uh, just a little, little segue, where everything is automated, people are losing jobs, everything's being taken over by, by AI, but you have enough uh, tech in your house or home in your house, home in your house, my gosh, or things, other things in your house that are mining enough Bitcoin or Litecoin or Ethereum or Ethereum Classic per day uh, that it actually makes up your daily wage. Wouldn't that be kind of weird if that was actually possible? I feel like that's definitely possible. I mean, people would lose their mind by the time we hit 2140 and all the Bitcoin have been mined. But uh, I feel like that's definitely something that could be possible. It would be kind of interesting to see if you could uh, get, you know, your daily wage from, or even let's say, let's say minimum wage to be safer. Uh, if you could make minimum wage uh, by simply uh, mining cryptocurrency in your home, that would be quite interesting. Anyway, let's, 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 let's move on. Last up. On Saturday, it was revealed that a lesser known yet well-established cryptocurrency startup has begun to eye the establishment of its own stablecoin. Or in other words, a cryptocurrency that is tied to the value of an asset that exists outside of its nascent market. For those who aren't in the loop, London Block Exchange, which goes by LBX for short, is a United Kingdom-based cryptocurrency infrastructure provider that intends to open this industry up to consumers on a massive scale. So far, LBX allows users to buy, sell, and store crypto assets through its automatic... Blah, 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 not really important, important. Uh, so this is where they actually said it. I, I don't know if that was... I guess that was a photo that they used. It seems like it has nothing to really do with the stablecoin. Uh, speaking with Business Insider on the topic, Benjamin Dives, the CEO of LBX, noted that this new cryptocurrency dubbed LBX Peg will be tied to the value of the British pound to a one-to-one -one ratio meaning that one pound will equate to one LBX peg token. The stablecoin has reportedly allegedly been approved by a banking partner who will hold the UK sterling required to issue LBX peg. But detailed uh, details regarding the institution were not elaborated upon. So this is, if I'm not mistaken, the first stablecoin that we have from the UK. We now have one from the UK. We now have one from Japan. We now have one multiple in the States. I think we have one in Australia. These are only going to continue happening uh i i think we're at our limit i don't think we logically need any more stable coins this, the 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 21 stable coins that we have right now as they continue to get more funding as time goes on i think that should be enough for the crypto uh, currency space to be able to cash out their money and i don't see a, a i don't see a future or an instance where 100 percent of the market will need to cash out i could see 10 15 20 25 percent of people uh, who are uh, not holding for the long term, who end up, uh, you know, cashing out. But I, 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 I think we're done. Like, I think this is, uh, but I mean, I told you guys before, I'm pretty sure we're going to have 50 something by the end of, or the middle of next year, the way that this is actually working out. But that is another stable coin that we have in the news. Let's see exactly if it ends up working out. And I still have a feeling that more countries, more countries specifically, are going to start listing their own or launching their own stable coins that are pegged to their currency obviously and these could at some point in the future become like the new digital fiat that people actually have to end up using or could end up using if they go to stores uh it's kind of how i thought about it at least for me uh anyway that is definitely going to do it for this video hope you all enjoyed hope you all are having a great day morning afternoon and or evening wherever you are wherever you might be thank you once again for watching i do appreciate all the support that is my battery figured that was going to happen uh, I'm pretty sure this is Edinburgh. I, as I'm looking at it, I'm pretty sure this is uh, Scotland. If you have not been to Edinburgh, definitely go. It's like one of the most beautiful cities in the entire world. Anyway, that was out of the question, not the point. Hope you all have a great day, and I'll talk to you all soon. See you.